All right, welcome back to Business and This morning, we were supposed to be joined by Odiambo on uh, the Metropole Review. But he says he's stuck in traffic somewhere. Stephanie needs to tell us exactly where he's stuck at after you call William. All right. The roads, are not really, uh, the, the roads are not looking so good this morning, as you could see from our review. So what headlines are we supposed to look at this morning? Let's cross over and have a take a look at that. Now, states cut back power target to 7,200 megawatts. We're going to come back to that and take a look at that later on. So now what we have here is... Um, Treasury Mall's graduate interest uh, red caps. I don't think we have the right information at this point. All right, now this one here is CBK wants digital lenders over customer exploitation. Now, this is a point that we've been following uh, on Metropole uh, Business M for time now. Since we do know that the Central Bank of Kenya governor yesterday, he was uh, in Kisumu sort of telling the residents on the new information or security details on the new currency that is the 50, 100, 200, uh, 500 and 1,000 shilling notes that are in circulation now. But of note was his point that yes, mobile lenders in this country have been on a steady increase. Let's take out the numbers. Now, currently in Kenya, we have over 83 mobile lenders that are active within the economy that are lending to Kenyans. Of note has been, even on Business AM, the areas that we've spoken about them, number one, is that the rates they charge, that is on the interest, are quite high. Number two, some of them use dubious or harass customers to get their money back. Number three, the question of being regulated by the central bank. Now, they're saying that any lender or anybody who deals with money in the country needs to be viewed as a bank, all right? Yes, and as much as you don't take deposit, you need to be also reviewed by the central bank of Kenya. Now, there is a drive, which I can say, I cannot confirm whether it is sustained or not. Therefore, you have all the mobile lenders regulated as mobile banks in Kenya that is operate within the 2016 cap rate laws that were introduced into the banking sector. Now whether this will survive because we do know there's also a drive from sections of parliament and some sections of bankers in this country to also cut down or repeal the cap rate laws that are within the economy as we talk about the banking sector. Now, this is a headline that we shall be watching. And if any development happens, and we shall be hosting some of the mobile lenders here in the studio to also chat further, as we have in the past, on what regulating them as banks really mean. Now, we do know that some of them have formed a union, all right, the mobile lenders union, that is supposed to also look into issues. Number one, professionalism. Number two, interest rates. And number three, the operating environment in Kenya. Now, we have confirmations that some of them are also working hand in hand with the Central Bank of Kenya to come up with draft and regulations that are going to govern this robust sector. Regulation or no regulation? Are we going to have a bank that is also going to be treated as some of the banks that it is that are running in the country? Some of the questions that are supposed to arise, we shall be following them and also table them to you. Important next headline that we're supposed to look at this morning. All right, now civil servants to be employed on contract basis. Now, this is a very important headline. Now, we've also spoken about it here on Metropole Television Business AM with Peter Amunga. We are looking at reducing the wage bill in which the country is operating on. Now, we do know that civil servants and the government spend in, spent in upwards of 773 billion shillings in 2018-2019. Financial year. Now there is a sustained drive now from Rotich and SRC, who we do know, are uh, in the long term of spending 21 billion shillings, isn't it, to rectify the wage bill. We do know that if you compare our wage bill, which stands at 53% current, it's supposed to be reduced to 35%. That's the recommended 
um, revenue wage bill versus revenue collection. Now Kenya stands at 53% when it should stand at 35%. Now these are some of the draft regulations that, were, that are being drafted now, number one, to hold or to hire civil servants in some key sectors in this country on a performance contract basis. Now the contracts we do understand are supposed to run for three years, all right? Uh, so the government will not have you on permanent basis. Now, this is a drive that also supposed to lessen the amount of money the government pays to retired civil servants in this country, or we can call them pensioners. Now, we do know that they're supposed to receive an upwards of 84 billion shillings in 2019-2020. Some of the ways in which they've realized this is affecting them, number one, is that some of them probably have passed on earlier on, but the government still pays them the, the allowances for years, even after they're passing on. Some of the questions in which that we're looking into is, are the unions in this country going to allow this amendment? And we're asking you this morning, is this a better way to go for the government as opposed to going the permanent way? Another question, is the government really trying to hit back after they realize that their expenditure on wage bills in this country is, quote, unreasonable, quote, unsustainable? That's the question that we are asking this morning on Business M. We shall continue following this headline, and if any development comes out of it, we shall be coming straight your way to analyze it further with our experts in this studio. What other headlines are we looking at? this morning. All right. This has been received by both jubilation and fear and skepticism from both sides of Safaricom customers in the country. Now they're saying now reverse call service from Safaricom can be termed as good or bad. Here's what they're saying. That somebody is going to spend your money for a phone call. Where have we seen it? We've seen it happen um, in prison services across the world or in the country where if you receive a phone call from a prison facility anywhere in this country, first, there's the question that says, do you want to receive this call or not? It's under your discretion, therefore, to receive it or not. But the only product available under this platform we've seen is the Please Call Me platform that you sent a message for somebody wanting to talk to you or not able to call you and then they shall call you. Spoken to a couple of uh, people around um, me, and that's the only survey that I've done. They're saying it's not so bad, especially for parents to their children. But what about from peers to peers? Is it a good move where I'm going to spend my money to talk to you? How we're going to analyze this performance would be probably after one year of running or after six months when we shall be receiving official data of how many people are now using this from Safaricom and probably look at the earnings of Safaricom in terms of uh, voice data. Are they up in numbers? That's the only way that we business persons are going to judge this despite your emotions around this. But we shall be also coming back and telling you exactly how this headline is going on in the country. Is this the end or a Safari Com going to be forced to think otherwise? When we talk about innovation and products innovation in Safari Com in the country. Interesting, I tell you. All right, we cross over to the next headline that we're looking at, thi at this morning. Is Facebook takes onto the world with cryptocurrency. Good. The cryptocurrency is called Libra. Now, according to Facebook, Yes, we do have a lot of cryptocurrencies that are now being operationalized within the world economy. But the problem, according to analysts around this region, is that yes, you want this to be a cross-platform payment system. That's the only thing that the likes of Bitcoin and the ones that you know have not been able to achieve. That is bringing all these other currencies into one and then making it possible for somebody to pay across platforms. Now, the question that the, the only thing that we're looking into this is that, yes, different currencies across the world, across different economies, that means deeper and deeper and deeper regulations that Facebook has to fight now. It's a good idea. Yes, no denial. 
all right? Because there are some areas in which your currency cannot be actually used to pay for products or services across the world. Now, Facebook, yes, has a tougher reach, has a huge reach, but the question is, what about these regions that it doesn't have a reach? Which somebody would argue and say, yes, when you compare these regions against the one that it has re reach on, then it is possible. But the question is, how are they going to beat the regulations, even starting from Kenya or EAC or other worlds, where this is seen as a challenge? Is this going to be possible? Let's talk about the regulations in these other economies that are going to challenge Facebook on this. Revolutionally? Yes, of course. From which point? The across-platform payment system. That's the only way in which we can look at this and say it's a good product. So now the world is watching. It's a good move. Is Facebook going to, pe to, to, to actually move beyond these regulations? That's what the world and the world economy is actually watching at this point. What other headline are we watching this morning? Now, the world population in the 1900s, this is exactly what we're supposed to talk about with William Odhiambo this morning. So sad that we can make it this morning. And the world population also in 2050. That's exactly what we're supposed to talk deeper into what it means on the world economy as well. Well, that makes uh, the review this morning. What follows next, we're looking at the state of local tourism in the country. We have a CEO walking into the studio this morning so that we can settle on the areas in which we are going to look into these issues. Question is this, the numbers that speak of uh, local tourism, we do know that there were upwards of 3.4 million beds that were booked in the cross hotels in 2018-2019. In 2016-2017 budget, we did see 4.5 billion shillings allocated in promotion of tourism activities in the country, which led to a good performance in 2018-2019 because for the very first time, we did cross the 2 million mark of visitors coming into the country. So the question that we're asking this morning is, what other areas are left for us to look into? And for those of us who are into this business, what areas are we negotiating when it comes to understanding local tourism? And what part can we play in making it a better place for this business? Expeditions Africa CEO is right into the studio. Good communication, good topic coming up next on Business M after this break.